Hello and welcome to another demonstration. Today I'm going to be showing you doing configuration as code for the Ansible Automation platform and in particular controllers. The idea being you can have a Git repository where you keep your uh, configurations, uh, you know, for the Git repository or rather for the controller. So instead of coming in controller and clicking, clicking, making your adjustments here, you do it in your Git repository and that gets applied to the controller via automation. So why is that important? It could be for change control or compliance, right? Some folks require that uh, every change has like a documentation in their system and you can quickly tie that into uh, your Git repository pieces, all of those files adjusting. So that way you can have the automation platform kind of apply all that stuff. It could also be for uh, potentially disaster recovery or just speed of configuration, right? So if I've got a controller cluster, I can just make that adjustment in those files there and then do the push and then it will go out to all of my controllers and synchronize all those changes. So I'm going to start by showing you my credential section as well as my inventories and my uh, as code server here. So they should be limited. So I am going to, in my demonstration, I'm going to create an inventory. And so you can see here, there's only four inventories. I'm going to be creating the AWS inventory. And then here I'm going to be creating two additional uh, EC2 uh, credentials that are going to be used for said inventory. So I'm going to go to my template section and I have config as code. It is a job template in my uh, controller. So it's kind of meta the controller is going to be firing off a job that will configure itself, but I'll go ahead and click the launch. And while that works its way through, I'm going to pop into my Git repository just to give you an idea of what's going on. So I've got uh, two main sections I've got here is my main playbook and then I've got my variable section. So in my variables, I've just got uh, three YAML files and I separated them all out. Uh, just for the sake of like quickly understanding what different pieces are doing what inside of this demonstration. This could theoretically be one big file because really all I'm doing is creating a set of variables in here, right? These are data models that I've created. And so in the cred for credentials, I just created a creds variable and then I have the various um, variables uh, that I'm going to be creating and pushing into my uh, automation platform here. So these are going to be type uh, Amazon Web Services. So if you are going to be sourcing EC2 inventories, you do it based on credentials. And so I'm showing you how you can have multiple credentials tied to a single inventory uh, here. And I'm going to pop over to my playbook just to show you a little bit about what's going on here. So really, it's kind of a rinse and repeat this little code block gets copy and pasted over and over again if this is one big uh, variable file that's got everything in here you only have to do that once but for my case I was just trying to show you kind of these modular little chunks where it all kind of copy and paste it over and here I am doing an include variables so it just reaches to that file pulls that in the very next task it actually applies that so here is the uh, Ansible block controller that's the collection I'm using and in here the module specifically is the credential module so I am just looping through if you take a look here I'm looping through that creds variable and I'm applying it over and over and over so put in the name the organization and then the credential type it will take all that and we'll push it all in uh, loop through until it's completed then it just moves on to the next where it pulls the next set of variables and then does the inventory placement now I'm going to pop back over to my playbook really quick. I can see that it has in fact completed. So my config as code is done and you can see it's all orange. I'll go ahead and relaunch it so that we can see it pop up as green because this is item potent. So I'm going to pop to the various sections. Here's my credential section. I'll do a quick refresh and I'll do a refresh on the inventory as well. Pop back to the credential section. I can see two new credentials, my EC2 cred one and two. When I come back to my inventory, I have my AWS inventory that's created and the associated sources, right? So it was really easy to make those adjustments. All I had to really do was fire it off. Since this is item potent, I can pop in here and I can see that all of these didn't change. Now, I said it was item potent. But why is it showing there's a change on the credential? That is because I'm putting in a password on this credential. 
And so since that credential is encrypted and stored in here, it can't actually pull that variable or rather that value out to compare. So whenever you do set a new password or you tell it, hey, apply this password, it's going to overwrite what's existing in there. Now you could get around with that with um, doing a lookup. So if you have a secrets engine like HashiCorp Vault or CyberArt Conjure, CyberArt Paz or AIM or whatever they're calling it today, or Thycotic, if you've got one of those secrets engines looks up, you don't actually have to store, physically store those uh, passwords, those API keys, those tokens, whatever it happens to be. Uh, physically in the credential section, you can have those secrets engines look up at runtime, pull that information in. So this would uh, show green in those instances because you wouldn't actually be placing password. As you can see, it's pretty simple, pretty succinct. If you have any uh, questions or comments or you would tweak or tune this in your environment some way different, please reach out and let me know. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Bye.